My stepdaughter helped my husband hide his affair, so I took her college fund. Now they're begging me to forgive them. Hello Reddit. I need your aid right now since I'm in a difficult situation with my stepdaughter and don't know what to do. For reference, I, 42F, have spent 15 years with my soon-to-be ex-husband David, 44M. We've been married for 10 of those 15 years, and I loved him more than anybody else in the world. He has a daughter, Stacy, 17F, from a prior relationship. He and Stacy's mother were never married. They had a brief fling for a few months, but she became pregnant and opted to keep the baby. They'd split up just a few weeks before she discovered she was pregnant. They chose to maintain a friendly relationship so that they could co-parent the baby. Unfortunately, Stacy's mother died in a vehicle accident when Stacy was only six months old, leaving only David and his daughter. He informed me at the start of our relationship that he wasn't just searching for a wife, but also someone who would be a wonderful mother to Stacy. I was willing to do it since I adored children, and Stacy was only two at the time. I honestly didn't mind that he had a daughter. I was prepared to accept her as my own and raise her accordingly. I took our relationship extremely seriously from the start. After five years together, we decided to marry. Our relationship had ups and downs, but at the end of the day I believed he loved me as much as I loved him. I had no cause to suspect he might be cheating on me. Even a few months ago, we were discussing commemorating our 10th wedding anniversary with a family trip to some exotic location, and he was really pleased about it. People who cheat on their wives don't seem to be enthused about a family trip, so I didn't expect this. I discovered six days ago that he had been cheating on me with a co-worker for the past seven months. I was at work, minding my own business, when I received an email from a co-worker. It contained all of the specifics of their affair. She even supplied documentation of text exchanges, phone calls, and images of them together at locations on days when he claimed he was abroad on business, but those excursions were actually romantic getaways with her, which I had no known about. I was stunned when I received the email. I instantly went home, unsure what else to do. Nobody was home at the time because Stacy was out with a friend and David was working. So I examined those emails carefully again because I didn't want to have a breakdown at work. I noticed she had also included her phone number in case I wished to call her. She explained that she was doing this because she knew David would never tell me, and she believed I deserved to know the truth. David had apparently been promising her for the last six months that he would tell me the truth and discontinue our relationship since she was uncomfortable having an affair with a married guy. I think her conscience had kicked in, or something, but David kept promising to tell me. I even saw screenshots of him indicating he was ending our marriage to be with her. She had initially believed him, but after nearly three months of waiting, she decided to inform me herself. After reading that email, I reflected on it for a time before calling her because the worst had already happened. I was still in denial, so I figured speaking with her would help me realize this wasn't a cruel prank, it was actually happening. When I spoke with her, she began by apologizing and explaining that she had no intention of hurting my marriage and had simply fallen in love with David. That was why she believed I deserved to know the truth. She went on to detail how the affair began. How long it had lasted and all of the promises he had made to her, which were identical to those he had made to me at the outset of our relationship. My heart broke with each word she whispered to me. By the end of the conversation, I was certain there could be nothing more painful. But then she revealed that Stacy had been aware of everything and had been assisting him in concealing his activities. That really destroyed me since, in my opinion, I had always been Stacy's mom. I never thought of her as a stepdaughter. I had known that girl since she was two years old and raised her as my own. So the fact that she had also deceived me felt like the end of the world. His co-worker informed me that whenever David needed to lie to me or cover up something, Stacy would make excuses for his absence and explain why he wasn't returning my calls. In exchange for her silence, he offered her expensive gifts. That explained a lot of recent events. David had been completely indulging her, which had never happened before, but I assumed he was doing well at work, so he was buying her lovely stuff. He had also bought me a lot of jewelry and clothes, so I assumed his new practice of giving us presents was due to his success at business, but apparently not. Knowing Stacy had been a part of this and had met her father's affair partner multiple times while keeping it a secret from me devastated my heart much more than realizing David had been cheating on me. After that phone call, I decided to pack my belongings and leave the house since I did not want to be there any longer, waiting for the two of them to return home. I felt terribly betrayed and could not stop crying. I didn't want David to have the satisfaction of seeing me like that, so I packed a few items and drove to a motel outside of town. I shut off my phone since I did not want to be called. I was upset that day and ended up drinking myself to sleep in my hotel room. The next morning, I had to switch my phone back on to report ill to work. 
That's when I discovered I had a thousand unanswered texts and missed calls from David and Stacy, and I didn't want to respond to any of them. I also noticed a text message from a person at the auto dealership with whom I had been discussing purchasing a new vehicle. I had been putting off making the purchase since I wanted to save more money before buying it, which was pricey. I had also been saving for our anniversary trip and Stacy's 17th birthday, intending to give her a new automobile rather than buying one for myself. When I got that SMS, I remembered how I had planned to give Stacy a car for her birthday, which made me angry. In a fit of rage, I decided to concentrate on making myself happy without regard for anyone else. The guy from the dealership had inquired if I was still intending on buying the car, and on a whim, I went down to the dealership and purchased a sparkling new luxury car. I hadn't planned to buy it because it was well out of my price range, but I didn't have to worry about it. Since I married David 10 years ago, I've been saving for Stacy's college education. I had intended to offer her access to that account as a surprise when she announced which college she would be attending. But now that I knew what had been going on for the past few months, I didn't want to surprise anyone except myself. I took money from that account to buy the fancy car, which I then drove to our house to face David and Stacy. When I arrived, they attempted to hug me and tell me how worried they were, but I didn't let them. I instantly revealed that David's coworker had contacted me, and I now knew the whole extent of what had been going on behind my back. I was quite unhappy with both of them. They both looked shocked. David, at least, had the foresight not to say anything because he knew the game was up. Stacy tried to speak with me, stating she was only trying to look out for her father and didn't know what to do. She burst into tears, claiming she was confused because she loved us both equally and wanted us to be happy, but I didn't believe her. I assumed she was mature enough to understand what was good and wrong, and she purposefully chose to do the opposite. Furthermore, I'm very sure the presence she was receiving from her father helped her keep quiet about the whole affair. I told her I didn't believe a word she was saying. I was so furious off and upset that I announced my departure from David. He should have seen it coming, because I doubt anyone in my position would have stayed after learning something like this. I informed Stacy that, more than David, I was disappointed in her. Husbands cheat all the time, and this isn't the first or last time a woman will experience it. But I'd always expected Stacy to have my back. Despite the fact that we were not blood relatives, I had never considered her to be my stepdaughter. I had loved her as much as my own, if not more. Her deception and betrayal affected me more than anything her father did. So I determined that the education fund I had been saving for her over the years was no longer something she deserved. I was leaving them both behind. It was difficult for me to say that, and I almost cried up because this had been my family for the last 15 years. But after telling her, I walked out without giving them the opportunity to explain and return to the hotel. They kept phoning, but I refused to stop. They even followed me out, and I'm fairly certain they saw the new automobile I purchased. I drove away as fast as I could. After that, I wanted to block them, but I couldn't since I was still emotionally processing everything. They've been attempting to contact me for the past five days, texting virtually every hour and calling me, but I'm at a loss for words. So I just read all of their messages and left it at that. David had been trying to persuade me to forgive him for the first several days, but when he saw it was fruitless, he began apologizing and admitting that I deserved better. However, he began pleading with me to reconsider what I was doing to Stacy, stating she was only a child and did not deserve to suffer as a result of his acts. Stacy has also texted me along the same lines, confessing her mistake and requesting a second chance. She says she has always thought of me as her mother and is deeply sorry for everything. I had been ignoring everything, but yesterday I received a text from David saying he was tired of apologizing without getting a response. He demanded to know if I had any intention of returning to the family. That irritated me because he was the one who made a mistake, and he had no right to be angry with me. I instantly texted him back, claiming that I had already spoken with a lawyer and filed for divorce, which was false. I was still processing things and hadn't had the opportunity to consult with a lawyer yet, but he didn't need to know that. He didn't respond for about an hour, and when he did, he sent me a lengthy message accusing me of being selfish and the villain for responding in this manner. He stated he was fine with me filing for divorce and leaving him, but the fact that I chose to leave Stacy behind demonstrated how selfish I was. He told me that Stacy had been upset since I left, and that my unwillingness to allow her access to the college monies I had been accumulating for her had hurt her very hard. He was aware of the college fund, but had not bothered to save enough money for her tuition because he trusted me to handle it. I remember mentioning the college fund to him countless times. He knew I had been saving cash to surprise Stacy, but I had no idea he had not saved anything for her school. Now that Stacy is considering going to college out of state, which would be even more expensive, it's unclear whether she will be able to attend her preferred college. 
David believes I am the evil guy for taking away the college fund and shoving it in her face. He doesn't understand why I won't let her have access to the money since I've always planned to give it to her. To him, it appears like I am using this one error to be selfish, especially since he saw my new automobile. He believes I should reconsider. Now I am torn on what to do. According to his words, I don't feel comfortable taking things away from a child only to teach them a lesson or punish them. I've never been that type of parent and I don't want to start now. However, Stacy is not quite a child. She realized what she was doing was wrong. I do not know. I feel like she's terribly disappointed me and perhaps what I'm doing isn't that bad. I'm just really perplexed. Is it wrong of me to tell my stepdaughter that I would no longer fund her college tuition after discovering she helped my husband cover up his affair? Update 1. Hello, I apologize for not being able to provide you with an update during the last two weeks. It was only that I had been quite busy with job and dealing with my lawyer, so there was a lot on my plate. But now I've got some time. First and foremost, I'd like to thank everyone who commented on my initial article and gave me so much love and support. I am grateful from the bottom of my heart. Knowing that there were people who supported me, even if they were complete strangers, made things much simpler to live with. So when David texted me and I posted, I felt I didn't need to entertain any of it. Most of the comments on my article stated the same thing, I needed to block him and file for divorce as soon as possible so I could finally get him out of my life. And this is exactly what I did. Within the next several days I had consulted with a lawyer and filed for divorce. I also concluded I didn't owe Stacy anything. Even if I were her biological parent, I would not have given her money to go her dream college. She should have considered these things before assisting her father in cheating on me. You cannot stab me in the back and expect me to turn around and grin. I'm sorry, but it doesn't matter how old or who you are, that's simply not how this works. David's allegation that Stacy was being punished for what he did was incorrect. She was being punished for what she had done, and I made it abundantly obvious when I last met with them in person. I declined to give her the college fund since she opted not to inform me about her father's infidelity. That is the reason, and I believe I'm being fair. If they want to be angry about it, they are free to do so, but I will not tolerate it, which is why I blocked them. They now have absolutely no access to me. They are still attempting to reach me by calling from different numbers, messaging from new numbers, and emailing me from fictitious addresses. It doesn't matter, because all I do is read the texts and emails while ignoring everything else. Update 2, I eventually found out what was going to happen with the divorce, and happily, David is not opposing anything. I hope we can have a calm and amicable divorce. It's been about three weeks since I discovered he was cheating on me, and my life has drastically changed. I had been living at a motel until last week, but it was becoming too expensive. Even though I had enough money to remain for a few more weeks or months, I opted not to waste it. So I moved in with a buddy, who has graciously allowed me to stay until I can get my own apartment. I've also begun to contemplate therapy for myself after a buddy, who is a licensed professional, told me it would benefit me in the long term. I am thinking about it. Perhaps the most significant change was that I quit my job. It is a tremendous issue because I have been working non-stop for almost 20 years. I began working immediately after graduating from college, and I had previously worked part-time. But I believe I need a break right now. I've accumulated enough money over the last 10 years to take a few months off reorganize my life and launch my own business. That had always been the plan, but I decided to put it off until Stacy left for college so I wouldn't have to worry about money. Now that no one is holding me back, I can do whatever I want. So there's the plan. I'm going to spend these months developing a business model, looking for investors, and all that jazz. I'm actually looking forward to the future, even though I'm still sad about everything that has happened. I have also spoken with my parents about the divorce. I hadn't told them previously since I was still processing everything, but after speaking with them I posted an announcement on social media. I did not explain why, I simply stated that I was getting divorced. My close friends and family are already aware of what is going on, and they are the only people I care about, so what others say is irrelevant. Life has been complicated for the past few weeks, but now that the divorce proceedings have begun and we will meet with a mediator in the coming days, I'm hoping to be able to put this behind me and finally move on. Update 3. Hello David and I are planning to meet with the mediator tomorrow. It's strange knowing that I'll have to face him after nearly a month of no communication. As if I wasn't apprehensive and concerned enough before the meeting, Stacy sent me an email only half an hour ago. She stopped contacting me after two and a half weeks, and I assumed she was no longer interested in chatting with me. I assumed this email was about how she intended to pay for her college fees, but to my amazement, she texted me a thorough apology, and this time it appeared sincere. 
She didn't say anything about the finances. Stacy stated she was really sorry for what she had done, confessing she had been selfish and hadn't considered how I would feel if I found out the truth. She realized she had crushed my heart much more than David had and wondered if she would ever be able to put things right with me. She did however, mean it when she stated she had always looked up to me as a mother and truly loved me. She also stated that she was aware that David's presents were manipulative and that his affair partner had made it appear as if she was doing it on her own. However, she argued that it was due to manipulation rather than a desire to keep secrets from me. I'm not sure what to trust. Maybe she was manipulated, which is why she didn't say anything. She insisted on being confused, caught between knowing her father was wrong but not wanting to oppose him. In doing so, she betrayed me and had been conflicted for months. I want to believe her, I truly do, but with everything that has transpired I'm simply not sure. I was already uneasy and twitchy, but after receiving the email, I feel much strange about everything. I miss her dearly, as I do David, but I know I need to learn how to live life on my own. I've learned the hard way that I can't simply trust people, even my closest ones. I guess I'll have to stick to the no contact rule for now. I also acquired a new apartment and moved in. I've been living by myself for the past few weeks and it's been enjoyable. My friends and relatives pay me visits almost every other day to check on my well-being, which I believe is quite nice of them. I don't feel lonely because I'm usually with someone. However, I know these visits will not be as regular as they are today. I'm still working on accepting the idea that I'm a single lady. I've also started treatment. It will take some time for me to absorb and process everything that has transpired, but I am confident I will get there. I haven't communicated with David since our last mediation session, and while it hasn't been easy, it has been essential. In my last report I mentioned Stacy's email in which she claimed to have been influenced. At the time, I couldn't bring myself to trust her because everything was so new. But just last week, I decided to respond to her email. She had been sending me additional emails about her life. It felt like a one-way street. She'd keep reaching out, and I'd shut her out. But every time she emailed me, my heart would shatter and I'd cry, even if nothing bad was occurring in her life. I genuinely missed her. So I contacted her and told her I missed her. There's nothing else. I still maintain that she will not receive the college fund, but she stated that she didn't mind and didn't deserve it anyhow. She informed me she chose a college close to home over her chosen school because she did not want to burden her father with student loans. Even if she had asked him to co-sign, he would have refused. He had made that obvious. Stacy noted that they will have to make do with the money they have, and that while David will assist as much as he can, she will also need to contribute by earning her way through college. She stated she was cool with it, or so she claimed. We've been emailing back and forth, and I informed her that I'd like to repair our friendship, but I need time. After everything that has transpired, I simply cannot digest it all right now. She understands and tells me to take as much time as I need, knowing she has abused my confidence. I'm not sure what will happen next, but I'm hoping for the best. Fingers crossed. Now to the next story, story 2. My dad is trying to force my uncontrollable stepsister on my trip so I cut him off. I, 17F am graduating and my friends and I have already planned a trip to a cabin for the summer before we start college. I have been a babysitter since I was 13 so I have saved up a considerable amount of money. When I was 15 my dad got remarried about a year and a half after my mom passed away. My dad's wife had a 13-year-old daughter and as soon as we moved in together they started to push her off on me and force us to do everything together. I don't like my stepsister. She's always throwing tantrums if she doesn't get what she wants. She's spoiled to the point that at my 16th birthday she got her own special cake so she wouldn't feel left out. And she also blew out the candles on my cake and when I complained my dad told me it's time to grow up, being a sister is about sharing things. I told him I didn't have a sister and I guess she overheard and she went on a rampage. The party was ruined. I distanced myself more from them after that. I'm forced to either take her with me to places or stay home with her if I can't take her, or my dad or dad's wife can't watch her or don't want to deal with her. Imagine everything that I said she does with my dad and his wife to a 15, 17-year-old me. I was forced to take her bowling with me and she would not stop trying to dig her hands in the part where the balls come out and she tried running down the lane so I had to take her home and my night was ruined. This happens a lot but they don't care. I have tried to keep this trip a secret from her, but when I was in my room on the phone talking about it over pizza and music, I found out she snuck in and hid in the closet and was eavesdropping. She bursted out asking if she could come and I told her no and to get out. She started stomping her feet and she ran out. My friends begged me to not invite her. My dad called me downstairs and asked if she could go because she could use a vacation and I told him I'm not taking her, they can take her on a vacation but I'm not watching her for almost three weeks alone. 
My dad's wife called me selfish and that my dad was paying for a portion of it anyway and if Lily doesn't go then I don't get to go. I told her she doesn't get a say in any of this, she's not my mom and to stop forcing her child on me when she created what she is. Lily starts yelling at me about not being a big sister and I don't want to spend time with her. I snap and tell her I don't. She ran away crying and my dad said he won't pay for the rest of my trip if I don't take her. So I told him if he does that I will not be talking to him anymore nor will I forgive him for it. He said I'm being dramatic and she isn't bad. So I grabbed a bag and went to my aunt's house, my mom's sister, and told her what happened and she said she would put up what he took away and when I go to college, I can stay with her. I told my dad what I was doing and he blew up at me and said I was being a brat and they're my family now and not my aunt. As far as I know, she does not have any disabilities. She's been to doctors and therapy. She's just insanely spoiled and that's how she's always gotten her way when told no. The first time I met her everyone agreed on Mexican except her and she was yelling in the car for 10 minutes before she calmed down by her mom appeasing her. Then she goes back on her phone texting. If she does then that explains why she acts that way and I can take it that she can't help it but I still shouldn't be forced to watch her 24 7 relevant comments. Commenter, your aunt is acting more of a family than your dad. I agree, see if you can live with your aunt now. Are you dependent on your dad for college? OOP, I am not, my mom left me money for two years. I decided to do an RN program and then go back once I work and save up more money. Commenter, if you are being truthful about Lily's behaviors it sounds like she has some sort of emotional or intellectual impairment. Has she had a formal diagnosis? OOP, no she is just extremely spoiled and acts like this to get her way. She knows she just has to cry a bit and stomp around and they'll give in, to another commenter. She does not have any mental problems. She's just spoiled. She's been to doctors and therapy. To a deleted and downvoted comment, I don't have nor did I want a sister. It's not even like they tried to slowly bring us together, they forced her on me. She constantly throws tantrums so if any small thing is about me, she needs to be the center of attention. She may be a child but she is not my child and I shouldn't have had to become a parent because of my dad's wife's lack of parenting. Commenter, how far away from 18 are you? I would slowly start moving important things to your aunt's house and then move in the day you turn 18. Make sure you let your school know not to contact your dad anymore and that you are living with your aunt. Oopi, I turn 18 in September. I have read the comments and I'm making lists of everything I need to get and put at my aunt's house. On being the bigger person, I don't have to be a bigger person. I'm tired of being neglected and having her forced on me. I'm going on this trip without her and if that ends up with me not talking to my dad anymore. So be it, he's the adult and parent here. Update post, August 30th, 2024. Almost six months later. I know a lot of people wanted an update to my last post, but I can't post a link so you can go to my profile to see it. The trip happened and I did not end up taking her like I said I wasn't. From the time that I posted that up until the time that I left, the household was very tense and awkward. I was not speaking to any of them. The only person I had to confide in and talk to my aunt and I'm so grateful for her. My dad still thought that I was going to bring her on the trip and I kept telling him that I'm not watching her and she is not coming with me. The morning of the trip we left at like 6 in the morning when he called me. I was already about 5 hours out so he couldn't do anything. When I got back it was a lot of yelling and crying from me and my dad and his wife. She said that I left them in a tough position and they had to stay home because they couldn't get anyone to watch Lily. My dad and I had a serious talk for hours and he agreed that maybe we need to separate so we can work on our relationship. Which hurt me because I would have liked for him to tell me I can stay in my own home. While we do it. But I did end up going to my aunt's house with no issues. My dad and I started family therapy with just the two of us. His wife was pretty upset. He was actually listening to me and was seeing where I was coming from. Right when we were getting good and building a better relationship I came over for dinner and he asked if we could integrate his wife and Lily into therapy and I told him that I had no interest in having a relationship with them. She called me a selfish C asterisk 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 and that I need to be grateful that she let me stay with them after she moved in. I waited for my dad to correct her and he was pretty much silent so I left and I haven't talked to him in almost a month. He keeps showing me that he will not be on my side. So, to wrap things up, the cabin trip was so much fun. I have never felt so free from a burden. The trip was in June and we were there for almost a month. We extended it. When I was packing for school, my dad came to visit and I guess his wife called and he had to lie about where he was because I guess she didn't want him to see me. So I told him, we don't need to have contact right now or continue therapy because it's clear which part of his family he cares more about. I don't know what's going to become of my dad and right now I don't care, I'm focused on school and studying to become a nurse, 
I don't want any negativity to ruin this experience but I'd be lying if I said it doesn't hurt that I don't have a parent to experience this with but my aunt says she is my surrogate mom and to share all my worries and success with her. I am currently in my first week of college and the amount of freedom I feel here is also so, new. I am a little overwhelmed but I am in an honors club. I also am in a creative writing book club and the friends I have made are so amazing. I am currently living on campus and I have never been better mentally. I am getting separate therapy to deal with my mom's death because that was never offered to me by my dad. My aunt has truly become a mother figure to me. Being two states away from her is really hard but I can't wait for weekend visits and holiday visits. Also, another thing is that I'm going to be a godmother. My aunt was told at 22 that she would never be able to have kids and she is currently 4 months pregnant and I'm so excited because if anybody is going to be a good mother, I know it's going to be her. When she came to visit and tell me I think she saw I was a little worried. I told her I'm so excited and happy for her and nothing will change that but she's the only family I have right now and don't want to get left behind like I did at home and we cried and she promised me that she was filling in for my mom and she will be there for the rest of my life, whether I like it or not. I am planning the baby shower and I can't wait for the baby to be here. But yeah, that's it. Thank all for checking up on me and giving me encouraging words. Relevant comments. Commenter. I just don't understand how your dad doesn't see that Lily is a massive problem if they have to hire a babysitter at her age or being 15. And they were stuck at home with her as a result. OOP, he doesn't want to see it or he does and cares more about keeping his wife happy. Commenter, also, what do you write about in this writer's club? Oopy, bring in work you have written and share it. Write flash fiction from the same prompt. Write poems, watch videos or lectures about writing techniques. Talk about writing contests or places to submit stories. We're talking about incorporating improv so we can be creative that way with our stories commenter. Downvoted. I feel like you should have set some better boundaries instead of just giving up. You need to lay it out for him. Do you really think she's good for your life if she's keeping you away from your daughter? Are you really a man and a father? If you're going to let a woman dictate what you can and can't do, I would tell him straight up you don't have the luxury of giving up because you made me. So I would appreciate if you get a goddamn backbone and start acting like it OP. That's fair and I respect your opinion but it's not my job to try and fix anything or set boundaries anymore. We did talk about it in therapy and he still tried to integrate them into the sessions when I have expressed hundreds of times I do not want that so I'm done trying. I'm the child in this situation. Now to the next story, story 3. I didn't tell my parents about my college money, then my dad stole it, causing an unforgivable betrayal that tore our family apart. Original. Am I the asshole for not telling my parents that I received money from my college? May 14, 2023, I, 20 years old, non-binary, live with my parents, in their 50s, and my two sisters, 20 years old and 19 years old. For as long as I can remember my parents have had financial difficulties. For the past four months I have paid the entirety of my parents' rent. While I don't really make that much I work 50 hours a week most weeks due to understaffing so I get a pretty good paycheck. Plus most of the time I'm able to set aside some money for saving. However these past months every one of my dad's paychecks, he makes the most money out of us all, have been garnished or been completely gone before he ever gets them. I have the misfortune of getting paid the exact same days as him. So the majority of my paychecks and all my savings have gone to paying for bills. Two weeks ago my dad didn't get his paycheck and I ended up overdrawing my bank account $1,000. It was an accident as I had forgotten about a payment that I had made that had yet to show up. So when I got my paycheck on Friday it was just $100. Which my dad immediately asked for 80 of. I had told my parents I would be unable to help financially for the next two weeks and again my dad didn't get his check so my parents are scrambling to get money together to avoid our utilities being cut off. My college does this thing. I don't know if every college does this or not. Where you pay the full amount of your tuition and then at the end of the semester you get the amount of scholarships and financial aid paid to you. There is a deadline to get the money however they hold it for you if you miss it. The most of the two years I have been going there I have forgotten to do that so the money has been sitting around. I had missed the December deadline for the fall semester but I got a jump on spring knowing that I would forget and it is my last year at that college because I am transferring to another one. I promptly forgot about it. Well on Friday I received an email from the bank system my college uses that I will be receiving the money. I had shrugged it off because most of the time I receive my money from that kind of stuff really late. So while the email said one, two business days I was thinking it would be in June. So imagine my surprise when I see that that day it was in my account. Also considering that it has been sitting there for two years it is a fair amount. I am by no means rich or anything but it was certainly more than I had been expecting. 
I paid a bill that I just haven't been able to and the majority is just sitting in my bank account. It's been two days and I haven't mentioned anything about the money. My parents never even knew I was getting money 